Jamie, thanks. Tomorrow marks the 20th anniversary of the most destructive wildfire in Arizona history. The Rodeo Chetuskai fire destroyed 468,000 acres of some of the most pristine ponderosa pine forest in the world. And the people of Heber Overgard were hit the hardest. 300 of their homes were destroyed. Tonight, Team 12's William Pitts takes us back and talked with homeowners who had to rebuild after losing everything. The fire, the smoke. It was unrelenting. Joyce Schusler could see it coming, but there was nothing she could do but run. I didn't understand a wildfire like I understand it now. The Rodeo and Chetuskai fires were heading for each other, ready to merge into the largest fire the state had ever seen at the time, right by Joyce's home in Heber Overgard. Hundreds were evacuated, with the massive fire bearing down on them that would grow to 468,000 acres. They were slurry bombing as we were going down the road. Joyce was evacuated to Payson, hunkered down with the rest of the town, watching the fire creep closer. Then one night, she overheard an insurance adjuster who had come back from surveying the damage. I heard him say our address. Um, so that's how we found out. I, I had to leave. We, we left right away because it was, it was, you know, overwhelming. Her house was gone, down to the dirt. She never even had a chance to look through the rubble. Weeks later, she was allowed back to town. We saw a truckload of people, and some were firefighters, and they were saying, welcome home. And it was, it was pretty neat. But there was no home to welcome her back to. You're in this to protect property, but you know, uh, based upon the quantities and the volume, that you can't do everything. At some point, firefighters knew they would lose homes. There was nothing they could do about them. Broke the ridge, everybody's bugging out now. They had to focus on what they might be able to save. Anything that jumps 260, you guys need to put out. Highway 260, a two-lane highway that they hoped would act as a fire break. If it's savable, they're going to try to save it. It worked in places, but almost 300 homes were lost when the two fires merged. One was intentional, one was accidental, and, and both should have and, and, and should have never happened. The rodeo fire was started by an out-of-work firefighter near Sibiqui. Leonard Gregg was eventually sent to prison for 10 years. The Chetuskai fire started by Valinda Jo Elliott. She had run out of gas while riding a quad and started a signal fire for help. A passing news helicopter picked her up, but the fire wasn't put out. Nobody knows right now where this fire is going to go. At the time, U.S. Attorney Paul Charlton had to decide if Elliott should be charged. Our decision, my decision, was not to prosecute Valinda Elliott. Homeowners were furious. They stormed out without waiting for an explanation. We lost everything we own. It's flat on the ground. Let her come and clean my lot up. Signs up and down these roads saying no open fires. Does that mean everybody but her? 20 years later, Charlton remembers walking into that gym, knowing he was about to disappoint hundreds of people. The most difficult decisions are those in which you have to tell people who have been hurt by a wrong that you cannot prosecute a case. There was legal reasoning behind his decision. Necessity. Elliot started the fire to keep from dying in the wilderness. It's a long-standing defense. Won't somebody turn or put out that fire? She was reassured that they would, and that is textbook necessity defense. That's where the, that's where the fire came in. But with homes still smoking, legal explanations didn't matter to a lot of people. After I had time to really think about it and absorb it. And you can always replace material things, uh, but it is hard to lose a lot of family momentum and whatnot. Joyce's back porch used to look out on the forest, tall trees stretching for miles. Now those trees are gone, maybe forever. The burn scar altered what she sees every day. It was a whole different view, for sure. This house was rebuilt almost exactly as it was when it burned. It was my way of not dealing with things. You know, we'd lost our home, and then my husband died three weeks later. So I think I was, I know I was in shock, and so I was trying to recreate um, what was there before. If you didn't know what it looked like, you'd never know the fire tore through here now. It's back to being green. Trees and grass have come back. But the town and the people were forever changed. In Heber Overgard, William Pitts, 12 News.
Quite the reflection. Mm. William, thank you. As we commemorate the 20th anniversary tomorrow, Arizona Senators Kirsten Sinema and Mark Kelly have passed a resolution in Washington honoring the bravery and sacrifices made by first responders and community members affected by the Rodeo Chetiskai fire.